I'm going to demo the new employee self-service application in state software. And um, we are going to go through a standard users access in employee self-service, the menu options available to a standard user, and um, the ability to create, leave, and view leave requests. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. So this is the main menu to log into the application. And right away, it will display the application's um, dashboard. And so off to the left, you're going to see menu options available. And then you're going to see the dashboard information, which for a standard user who doesn't have any um, approver type of access, they are going to see um, any announcements that have been posted. And so this is controlled by a specific role. So the um, user in the district that manages the district-wide announcements will post those and then users co can come in and display the announcement information. Also, if there are any custom links that the district once added, um, they can, there, there's a role for that as well. So a district staff member would need that role and they would manage posting any district-wide custom links. So in this case, they link to the employee self-service user manual. So after the home screen, I'm gonna to go to the employee profile and this will show the employee information from USPS, from the payroll system. And so um, there isn't a way to go in and directly edit um, this information. Um, this is all pulled from USPS. However, if um, Levi is my user here, if he notices that there is some incorrect or, or information that needs to be updated, um, he can request a uh, data change request record. And so I'll touch upon that here in a little bit, but first let's go through what um, we're seeing in the employee information. So the profile information displays basically the address information, uh, marital status and things like that. Uh, the contact information, address information, um, email information, um, employee dates is the third option, and then employee qualifications is the last option. So uh, upon reviewing this, if I notice, maybe there, uh, Levi has moved and needs to change his address. So what he can do at this point is click on create new data change request. And what will happen then, anything that's shaded gray are fields that he can edit. So if he needs to change, change his address information, and let's say a new city, and then from there, um, if he needs to make any changes in on any of the other tabs, he can do that at this time. Once he has finished all of his changes, he clicks on submit data change request, and it tells it that the operation was successful. And there is a specific role, the data change manager. So whoever in the district has that role will review those data change requests. And then that person will submit those to the treasurer's office for them to then go into USPS and make the updates. Okay, the next thing I'm going to go into is the position information. So these are the current positions that um, this employee holds. There's one that's active and there's one that's inactive. So the district can configure what job statuses they want um, to be displayed. So in this uh, district example here, they want both active and inactive to appear. So we're going to look at his active position here. And so we can see um, some of the information, again, this is getting pulled from the position record in USPS. So um, you can see, you know, the information is supervisor, um, that he's eligible for sick personal and vacation leave and his current compensation record. Also, if the district is configured um, to allow employees to view their paychecks, and their W-2s, they'll be able to see those menu options in the application. And so if I click on view uh, payslip, 
it's going to display all the uh, pay slips for this employee. And as you can see for our example, for our test data, we just have one. And um, obviously when um, a payroll gets posted, then the pay slip will then get recorded into the ESS system. So in order to view the pay slip, there are two ways you can do that. Um, you can download it into a PDF file and then view that PDF file. Or if you want to do just a quick peek, you can open it. And what happens is, is when you open it in a PDF format, it displays it into another screen or tab here. And then from here, um, you can view your payslip. If you have the ability to view your W-2s as well, I do not have an example of this, but if I did, it would show the years, the prior year W-2s. I would click that year on the grid and it would pull up the, the uh, W-2 in a PDF format so I can view it. Leave information for Levi, it shows um, his personal sick and vacation leave. And so it's going to um, really have three different tabs here. We have leave balances, we have absences and accumulations. So you'll see um, the uh, monthly accrual for each of these, how it's displayed and it's displayed in a daily unit, um, the max that they can accumulate here, um, uh, if any of these have a beginning balance, like such as personal leave, they probably set that at the beginning of the contract year. And then the current balance. So this last column is the current balance that this employee has. And so if I wanted to view um, absences that have been posted, and again, this is coming from USPS. There's a leave information area in there and it's pulled then into ESS. So all the absences, are getting pulled in from payroll, and then the accumulations are as well. So, and what's nice too is that you have um, these filter rows up here. So you can filter on a particular category or by date range. Um, so that's available in both the accumulation and the absences. So in order to create a leave request, I'm gonna click on the leave request menu and um, I have the ability to create a leave request and view my existing leave request. So let's click on create leave request. And as we saw in his position, he's eligible for um, personal sick and vacation leave. And so it pulls up his active position. And then from here, you can use the tab key or you can click on each of these fields to enter the information for your leave request. So let's um, select sick leave. Let's say uh, Levi has a dentist appointment. And what's nice is it does show the current balance. So, um, and then my reason. And then from there, my start leave date and time and my ending leave date and time. And so if I know that this is going to take place next week on the 29th, I can select that. And you notice it immediately fills in the same day for the leave date. And then from there, I can enter in um, my, um, if I know it's going to be a half day, I can put in a half day's time, or if I know it's a full day, I can put in my work schedule, um, which would be 8 a.m. to, let's say, 4 p.m. Um, and so from here, um, one thing that I'm going to show you here in a little bit is that you can preset your work schedule. If you, every time you create a leave request, you want it to default eight to four. Um, there is a profile option underneath the user. If I go down to the bottom here, you'll see this profile option and we'll be able to preset that value. Um, so for now, we're just gonna enter it in manually. And then from here, total time requested, and it looks like this district increments on half days. I'm going to go ahead and increase that uh, by clicking on the plus sign so I get a full day for the dentist. Um, if I want to enter in a phone number here, I can do that. Um, also, that's something that can be predefined in the profile window. And if I have any additional comments, I can put that in here. If I need to select that I need a sub for this day, I can enter this in here. Um, otherwise, you know, if they're using a, another third party system for sub calling, then they don't have to use this option. And then from here, the supervisor information, 
um, just displays the supervisor's name and their email address. So I kind of look things over here and it looks like everything is complete. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on create leave request. And when I do that, you're gonna notice a little message off to the right-hand side that says operation successful, leave request created. So it just informs the employee that the leave request was created. And basically it's an uh, approval workflow to then be sent to his supervisor, Brenda Mullins. And so you'll notice too, that some of the fields here changed colors. And that's basically just indicating that they've been reset back to a blank value, basically um, getting the screen ready for them, for um, Levi to enter another leave request. So in order to view the leave request that he's just submitted, I can click on my leave requests and it's going to display um, existing leave requests and where they are currently at. So looking at this one, I know it's for his active position. Um, it was for one day and it was for sick. And it says right now that it's been initiated. So that's telling me that, you know, I basically submitted the leave request and no one has approved it yet. It has to go through the complete workflow approval. So if I have two people, our supervisors that need to approve this, once both of them approve it, the status is gonna change from initiated to approved. Um, if I view this, I'm going to also, there's gonna be three different options here. So just my leave request details that I pretty much entered in when I created the leave request, my approval trail. So what's nice about this is it you know, kind of gives me an update of where it currently is at. And currently Levi submitted it and that's it so far. Once Brenda um, approves it, it's going to display her information as well and when she actually approved it. <clears throat> and the leave request daily details is just providing um, the information on this was, you know, if I took like three or four days, I could see um, the days entered in each of, of here. So um, here I'm seeing that on Monday, I requested it for Monday for a full day. And so I'm just seeing that day's information, which makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of here. And with this as well, um, I do have a leave calendar by default with standard user access, and I can go in and view my leave request via a calendar. And so um, it's going to highlight the day that I'm currently on, which is the 23rd. So that is my day that I've logged into the system. It's the current date. Um, but I'll see my leave request from the, for the 29th. And then I can click on this to display the information about it. And it tells me right here, again, that it's been initiated. So that will update as it goes through the workflow approval process. Also, I'm able to go in here and um, change um, my calendar view. Right now it's monthly, but I have options to do weekly, daily. So lots of different options in here that I can use. And so the last thing I wanted to show you, that profile. So if I go down to the profile or go down to my name and click on profile, um, anything that's shaded in gray are things that I can add and update in here. So obviously these first four fields are coming from the employee record and I can't make any changes there. Um, but these will affect, um, some of these fields will affect my leave request. So if I put in a default phone number here, when I create a leave request, there is a field for the phone number and it will automatically populate it with whatever is entered in here. Here is my um, start time and stop time. So again, if you know I'm on a regular schedule where it's 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., once I enter this in here and save it, I go to create a leave request and my start and ending times will always pre-populate with eight to four. I can definitely override those when I'm creating my leave request, um, but it is a, a more of a convenience to have that in there. Also, you'll see that we have a couple options here. If I wanna opt out of receiving a leave request via email, I can check mark this. And if I don't like the light mode um, for the application, I can change this to dark mode and it changes the appearance. Um, at the bottom here, I'll also see the type of role that I have in the application, and that's standard user role. 
And uh, then once I make any changes here and click on save, then those are changes are saved to my profile. I also have the ability to reset my password here if I need to. And uh, that completes um, an overview of what a standard user has access to and how they create leaves in the Employee Self-Service Program.